Hey guys and welcome to the Cloud Developer Channel. In the last video I showed you how to start adding the semantic UI, CSS, and JavaScript framework to our application that we're starting to build. And uh, one of the things that we did was we added the CSS uh, library itself. Now that allowed us to start using the grid system, start uh, building the menu, and start using some of the CSS classes that are available there. Now, one of the things that I didn't show you yet, and we're going to walk through that in this video, is how do we actually add uh, the JavaScript portion of that library and start consuming it from our Angular application. Now, in order to do that, uh, we actually have to add the jQuery library to our Angular application. Now, one of the things that um, if you do a quick search on Google, you'll notice that uh, jQuery doesn't actually come uh, by default with Angular. And in order to make it work, you actually have to do some additional steps. And there's some gotchas that I'll show you uh, uh, for you how to work around that in order to get it working. So the, uh, the thing that we actually want to be able to consume the jQuery library for for uh, semantic UI itself is uh, some of the components such as the modal, um, there's a couple of other components that actually do rely on the jQuery uh, library to be able to do that. So let me show you real quick. Um, if we scroll down to the modules, um, for example, you'll notice that there's the, the modal. Um, so if I actually go ahead and run that, you'll notice that we get a, a modal window here. So we want to be able to do things like that, but in order to actually execute that piece of code, you actually have to add a, a jQuery library to your application. So let's go ahead and get started. So what I have here is the uh, application that we uh, created last time and we added the menu and we added this grid layout with two columns here. And what I'm going to show you is first how to add the jQuery library to our application and then how do we add a button to be able to just show you quickly how to con start consuming that jQuery library to open up a, a modal window. So uh, what I'm going to go ahead and do here is I have Visual Studio Code already open and I'm in that folder where our application was created. And I have uh, also the running version of the uh, application itself. So I'm going to go ahead and stop this so I can go ahead and install the, the jQuery library. So the first step I'm going to take is I'm going to go ahead and install the jQuery library by typing in npm install jQuery dash dash save and what this is going to do is going to go ahead and install the jQuery uh, library and save it in our packages uh, JSON file so that it knows uh, to package it up uh, for next time. So it completed that step and the next step we want to do is we want to add uh, something that's called types um, and this is how Node allows us to actually uh, consume uh, or have IntelliSense type support and I believe it's called depend typings um, and basically uh, I'll show you uh, how to do that so npm install at types jQuery and I'll do uh, dash dash save dash dev the reason why we do uh, dash dash uh, save dash dev is because it only makes it a dependency for the development process because we don't actually need this library um, to be able to run the application in in production once it's actually compiled. So both of those components have been installed and if we take a look at our uh, package JSON, you'll notice that now we actually have, um, let's see, we did jQuery and it's listed right here with a version number and then this is the dependencies but for dev dependencies you'll notice that we actually um, have jQuery types defined. So everything is set up for us to start using it. Now what we want to be able to do is we want to first uh, start off by adding the actual jQuery library itself to our application and we do that by going to Angular CLI JSON and under the scripts, we want to actually uh, add a reference to two things. One is, is going to be the jQuery uh, min.js file. And then the other one is we're going to actually include the semantic UI.js uh, library as well. Now, both of them are actually under the node modules. And there's going to be a jQuery folder here. 
find it right here and under dist um, you'll notice that we have the jQuery uh, min.js and we're going to want to include that as well as if we scroll further down we'll see semantic UI CSS and under this folder we actually have semantic.min.js so let's go ahead and add both of those okay so once we get this imported uh, or added to this list here we should be able to go ahead and start our application up by uh, typing in ng serve and once this actually compiles and complete um, we should be able to go ahead and validate that we have access to jQuery uh, in our application now, before we can actually run any jQuery code and one easy way to actually be able to validate that it worked correctly is if we actually since I didn't refresh the page yet I, I should be able to show you this here so if I type in dollar sign, um, well, you can actually see that I have the Java library already loaded here. So, uh, but you can see that the jQuery uh, itself is not. So if I go ahead and refresh this, um, you can see that now it actually comes back because it knows about the library um, that was added by uh, us adding it to the um, Angular, the CLI, JSON file itself. So now we should be able to actually start using it. So what are our next steps? Well, the, the immediate next step we want to do is we want to actually add a button to our application so we can start uh, triggering some of the jQuery logic and then we'll add some other content to be able to uh, make the actual model itself. So let's go ahead and uh, go to um, the file where we can add our button first so we do that inside of the app component html and we're going to be adding it to this uh, column one uh, inside of our grid and the way to do that is we'll just add a button uh, we'll give it a class and uh, we're going to use some of the semantic uh, magic here and we're going to give it a class of ui we're going to call it button and um, we'll give it a piece of text that we want to display so show modal and we'll go ahead and close that so once I save it and I reload the page you can see that the modal showed up now one of the things that you can also do and this is a benefit of using a semantic UI library um, is you can start using some of the built-in classes to uh, make this look a little bit better so I'll make this a primary button and I'll go ahead and save it and now it actually just changed the look and feel of that button with just a simple uh, ad addition of a class. Now if I actually click on this um, or open up the dev toolbars, um, basically it doesn't really do anything. Now the reason it doesn't do anything is because I actually need to import uh, or add some logic to it. So the first thing I want to do is I want to actually add a, a click event here. So Let's go ahead and do that. And the way you do that in Angular is you open up a parenthesis and you type in click equals and you give it a method name that you want to actually call. So I'll, I'll call it show model. Open close. I'll go ahead and save it and uh, it reloaded the page. Now if I click this, I get an error. The reason you get an error is because we don't actually have a show modal um, function defined anywhere. So it tries to call it, but it fails because it doesn't know anything about that. Okay, so in order to get that working, we need to go back to the app component TS file. And this is where we're going to actually add the logic. So um, we're going to go ahead and add a method here called show model. Open close parenthesis colon void. Basically, it tells um, Angular that it doesn't return anything. There's just going to be uh, somebody calling this method to do something for us. Now, this is where it gets interesting. Now that I have this function and I go back to application and I click a button, nothing happens. And the reason for that is because well, we didn't actually tell it to do anything. So uh, what we want to do now is we want to actually call the modal um, function itself that comes with semantic library. So for example, we want to be able to do dollar sign UI modal and we want to call this dot modal and show. Now if I actually just type that in, 
I model model shell and I do this um, you'll notice that it, it's uh, highlighting it saying that uh, there's nothing on that um, jQuery HTML element that has a modal um, as a function so and in fact if we go back to our application it even complains that dollar sign it, it doesn't know anything about that now why is that so uh, the reason for that is because we actually need to import and tell angular about jQuery itself so uh, the typical way you would do this is you would do an import statement um, and in this case we would do a star as a dollar sign and you can specify from and just specify jQuery so once I do that um, and I go ahead and save it I go back here and you can see it's recompiling the application well now it gives me a different error so now it knows about the dollar sign but uh, it sees that modal doesn't exist on that given type now uh, what is going on well this is one of the intricacies of having a library that's not fully supported with angular just yet now uh, we can actually get around this problem by changing how we actually define this um, one of the things i'll show you real quick that might be important for you to know is if you're not using any other libraries but you're simply using jQuery the the benefit of doing the import statement like I did be, uh, right now is you can do something like this where you do uh, uh, the dollar sign and then you give it whatever the element you want and then you can actually see that uh, it gives you the IntelliSense full IntelliSense is available here um, now if you actually want to make this particular part of it work we have to actually take that feature away and uh, what you're doing is you're actually saying declare variable dollar sign and then it's going to be of type any so what this actually did is it allowed us to uh, say just basically don't try to do any kind of validation because it's a it's kind of a dynamic object so we just know for sure that the modal function actually exists on this particular object type so it will not actually try to do any kind of validation um, so if I actually go back here you can see that the application reloaded successfully and if I actually click this um, again nothing happens but it doesn't fail and the reason for that is because in order to make this work we actually need to uh, define a specific element that has all this uh, set of classes in here and I was missing a, a dot in here actually so now we actually want to add the HTML content or element that has these two classes defined so that it can actually attach to it and show us the model so let's go ahead and do that right now and uh, I'm not gonna get into too much detail because there's quite a bit of content here uh, for this uh, particular model dialog but uh, what I am gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and paste it in this um, app component HTML file itself right after our grid section and <clears throat> a couple of things to uh, to show you here so uh, this is our main um, div itself that has the UI modal uh, classes defined here we're defining the close uh, button icon that's gonna show up in the top right corner we're specifying a header section uh, for the actual modal itself then we're defining the content area for the modal and uh, in here you can see that I'm putting uh, an image with a logo in there I'm putting a description we're specifying some uh, other content uh, with a, a link um, that can be clicked and uh, later we're also defining an action now this these are the buttons that are going to show up in the model and in here we're specifying how do we want those buttons to look we're giving it a particular color we're telling it it's going to be a button and then we're also uh, giving it some other attributes um, and uh, i'll show you what that actually looks like and you can also see that it actually will have a check mark icon for one of the buttons so if i go ahead and save this now and we'll go back to this page here and i'll click the show model um, you can see basically the uh, model showed up with uh, a pretty good looking piece of content in fact and it didn't really take us uh, much time to to get this built now the reason for that is because uh, semantic UI actually gives you all of those capabilities 
you just basically have to define the layout and it's pretty straightforward if you actually go to the model semantic ui uh, website uh, for the modal uh, component itself um, all i basically had to do is you know, copy and paste uh, the uh, the header section the content section now you could also just uh, take one of their examples that they have here so for example if i scroll to the top here you'll notice that there's a standard model and there's a basic model uh, next to it there's a view source if you click that it gives you the content and you can just copy and paste this into your application adjust it real quick and then basically you have a functional model dialog. so in here what i can do is let's say i didn't want to uh, have this as a black uh, button but let's say i wanted to make it red so uh, in here i'll just find that particular element and instead of black i'll just give it the color red and as soon as uh, it refreshes i click the button and you can see it changed to red so um, also, let's say I wanted to give it less spacing in this section. So you can see that my actual image content area here is set to medium and I'll set it to small. I save it, click it, and you can see it actually the content moved uh, more to the left. So I, I can give it a different uh, size of an image or a logo. In this, in this case, I would actually expand it. You know, and I can basically start tweaking it to the way I want it to show up. So. Um, this is basically how you add um, jQuery to your Angular application and start using it for integration of other components that do rely and have a dependency on jQuery library itself. Now, it's typically not recommended because then you start bypassing a lot of the Angular uh, framework concepts of being able to render uh, all your code on the server side or pre-compile that code. And then you have to start managing state of your components. Um, now, to me, it's actually okay if you're just using other components that do rely and are browser-based, meaning that you're, they're not they're part of your application, but your application maintains state, and you're just uh, invoking those other external components to enhance the look and feel and functionality of your application. In that case, that's what Java uh, or the jQuery library is for, is not to manage state per se, even though you can do it, but really it's there to assist you in manipulating the actual HTML elements within your browser window, not uh, be the application framework. So that's why I believe um, using it for these kind of purposes is completely acceptable. So um, hopefully this was useful. Uh, if you have any comments, questions, please go ahead and leave your feedback in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this content, uh, please go ahead and subscribe to the channel and give it a like. Um, and if you have any questions and you want to see any other videos, um, you know, please go ahead and leave that um, in the comment section as well. Now in the future videos, what I'm going to start showing you is if you notice um, in my HTML, I actually have a lot of content here. I'm going to actually start spending some time on refactoring this view to uh, start actually storing the content in different components. And this is the beauty of Angular is because you can actually separate out into separate uh, components and it makes it easier for you to refactor and build and test your application. So uh, I look forward to showing you the next time. I hope you enjoyed this and have a good day.